Have you ever found yourself trapped in a cycle of negative thoughts such as sadness, anger, or jealousy? Maybe you constantly worry or overthink things? Or perhaps you're someone looking for more peace and mental clarity in your life? If you nodded along to any of these, this video is perfect for you. Today, I'll be sharing practical ways to control and harness the power of your thoughts. But you might be wondering what make me the right to share all of the secrets with you. Well, let me share a bit of my story. Like many of you, I was once lost in a whirlwind of negative thinking for decades. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't seem to shake off the heavy cloud of pessimism. The funny thing is, it was my own mind, and yet, it felt like I had no control over it. My breakthrough moment came when I stumbled upon the five steps I'm about to share with you. Watch until the end because the last one is the most important. The first step is to be aware of your mind. Our brain, sculpted through millions of years of evolution, is fundamentally designed to ensure survival. The amygdala, a crucial part, detects threats and activates the fights-or-flight response which was vital when facing dangers like predators. The adverse feelings it generated might have once been useful. For example, jealousy could have driven our ancestors to gather more resources. Today, however, our threats are more psychological. Instead of predators, our modern threats might be an impending deadline, a critical comment, or the fear of failure. Yet our brain can still misinterpret them as life-threatening. While this mechanism serves a protective role, its constant activation can be limiting, making us overly cautious and amplifying negative emotions like sadness, anger, and jealousy. These responses can trap us in unfavorable states of being hindering our growth and stopping us from feeling joy, abundance, and freedom, making us feel as though we're living in perpetual survival mode rather than truly thriving. Understanding this neural mechanism, its benefits, and its limitations can be the first step towards regaining control. When we know why our brain acts a certain way, we can work towards ensuring it serves our best interests in today's complex world. Now you might think, I know how the brain works, but I still feel bad. Here's something to think about. Are those sad thoughts really true? Changing how we look at issues can often change the whole picture. The biggest problem is the rise in the digital age and the sheer volume of information we consume daily. This constant exposure not only amplifies our reactions, but also leaves us more susceptible to external influences, often shifting our mindset towards negativity. Given these challenges, learning to control our mind has become an essential skill, not only for our mental well-being, but also to lead a fulfilling life amidst the chaos. Imagine if you could feel calm even when everything around you is negative. What if you knew that many bad things aren't about you, but about other people's problems, and what if you could choose to only listen to the good things and follow your own path of joyfulness? Wouldn't that be great? The second step is to recognize the downside of negative thoughts. Step back and think about your feelings for a moment. It's clear that our mind has patterns. These patterns, developed over time, often pull us into a world of negative thoughts. When we let anger take over, for instance, it doesn't just stop at the feeling. This anger, if we let it stick around, can stress us out, make us sick, and even push away our friends and family. Similarly, when jealousy rears its head, it's not just a fleeting feeling. It can make us doubt ourselves, feel bad about who we are, and can damage the trust we have with others. And if we let sadness grow without check, it becomes more than just a bad day. It can pull us into a deep pit of despair, making it hard to find happiness again. Now, some of you might be thinking, all right, I get it. Negative feelings can be harmful, but even when I understand that, I can't seem to escape them. That's a common feeling. 
One major trap many of us fall into is that when negativity strikes, we often dwell on it. Instead of seeking a way out, we dig deeper into those feelings, letting them become our reality. This spiral makes the problem seem never-ending, and the idea of ever feeling positive again appears distant. But here's a silver lining. Once we genuinely understand the lasting impact of these emotions, and can pinpoint when they start taking hold, we're on the path to regaining our control. So, think about this. What if you could stop bad feelings quickly? In just a few minutes or even seconds? Imagine not letting one bad moment ruin your whole day or week. How great would that feel? Third, the crucial step in controlling our emotions is simply observing our thoughts. Many times, these thoughts are just old habits, built from our past experiences, fears, or even random stimuli. They're not always truths or predictions about our future. Sometimes they're just thoughts. So, simply observe the thought without reacting. Pay no mind, pay no attention. Imagine your mind like a sky and every thought is like a cloud. Sometimes a dark cloud comes and tries to block the sun, which can make you feel sad or worried. But clouds move, right? So when a bad thought comes, instead of letting it stay and make you upset, just watch it. Think, oh, there's a thought, and let it pass like a cloud. Don't let it become a big storm in your mind. Alternatively, when a negative thought comes in, try saying to yourself, okay, thanks for that, but don't let it control you. Let it float away. By doing this, you let it drift away, just like a leaf on that river. Over time, this simple act of observation can transform how we interact with our thoughts, making us more resilient and peaceful. Consider this. In a world where we're bombarded with information, pressures, and stress, what if you had the power to choose which thoughts to engage with? What if you could let go of thoughts that don't serve you and focus on those that uplift you? How empowering would that be? Remember, it's not about suppressing or avoiding thoughts, but about choosing which ones to engage with. Just like you choose which shows to watch on TV, choose which thoughts to entertain in your mind. Fourth, a simple trick to help when bad feelings come is through breathing. Remember when you get stressed or worried and you take a quick breath? That's your body's way of getting ready to handle a problem. But if you become aware of the pattern of breath, you can break free from the cycle. Now I know you are probably thinking I've tried to breathe before, but it didn't work. Well, let's try this. If you now are watching this video, we do the 5-5-5 breathing technique together, from which we will inhale very slowly through our nose for 5 seconds, hold it for 5 seconds, followed by exhale very slowly through your mouth for 5 seconds. Repeat this process three more times so it's one minute in total. Close your eyes for better effect. Now, take a deep inhale through nose. Imagine peaceful white light enter your body. Hold it white light fill up your body. Exhale slowly through mouth. All the negativities float away of your body. Let's repeat. Inhale through nose. All the blessings enter your body. Hold it. Think about your loved ones. See their smile. Exhale through mouth. Release all the tensions. Inhale through nose. Breath in love and wealthy energy. Hold it. Think about something you are grateful today. Exhale through mouth. Relax your mind. Inhale through nose. All the abundance come to your life. Hold it. Be thankful for the way you have supported yourself. Exhale through mouth. Let go of things no longer serve you. I want to ask, do you feel calmer after doing this? Breathing like this helps to calm your brain and tells it that everything's okay. It's like giving your mind a mini vacation. When your mind is calm, 
It's easier to think positive thoughts and not get stuck in the bad ones. Knowing how to breathe right can help you handle those moments when the world feels a bit too much. It's a small step but can make a big difference in how you feel. Fifth comes the most powerful part we often overlook, the subconscious mind. Believe it or not, about 90 of our thoughts and actions come from this hidden part. It's like a big library of memories, especially those tied to strong emotions, whether happy, sad, or traumatic. Most of the time, we don't even know it's there, guiding our decisions. But here's where it gets challenging. Many of these memories, particularly the painful ones, aren't helping us anymore. They might have been relevant years ago, but now they just weigh you down without you even realizing. For example, a past failure might make you too scared to try something new today, even though the situation is entirely different. Or an old heartbreak might make you overly cautious in new relationships. These outdated recordings in our subconscious continue to play, influencing your choices and feelings, even if they're no longer relevant to your current life. But don't worry. You can guide your subconscious mind one of the effective ways through positive affirmations. Every day before you go to bed or just as you're waking up, spend 10 to 30 minutes listening or even shouting out those repeating uplifting sentences to ourselves. Like I am brave or I am strong. I am a money magnet. I am good enough. By consistently feeding our subconscious with these uplifting reminders, we give it newer, healthier memories to focus on. But here's a common concern. I've tried affirmations and they didn't work. While positive affirmations can be potent tools, their effectiveness can sometimes be hindered if it's not done correctly. Remember, while affirmations are transformative tools, they need to be genuine and consistent to be effective. So make sure the affirmations resonate with you. If it feels false, craft your personal statement that feels more genuine. Make it a daily ritual. The best times are right before bed or just after waking up, when the subconscious mind is most receptive. Lastly, try to pair the affirmation with action that align with the desired outcome. These actions cement the belief in your subconscious that the affirmation holds true. And guess what? Positive affirmations are just one of the ways to steer your subconscious mind. If you're keen to dive deeper and to reprogram your subconscious mind, drop a comment with subconscious mind and I'll craft a special video just for you. Mastering your mind is a journey, not a destination. It requires practice, patience, and dedication. By cultivating awareness of your thoughts, understanding and mitigating negative emotions, practicing mindful observation, mastering breath work, and reshaping your subconscious mind, you are well on your way to leading a balanced, positive, and resilient life. Remember, you hold the power to shape your thoughts and through them, your reality. Embrace the journey and discover the tranquility and strength that lies within mastering your mind. Thank you for embarking on this journey with me. If this video resonated with you, I invite you to like and subscribe to our channel. Share this video with others so they can benefit from this message and don't forget to leave a comment below sharing your thoughts, reflections and experiences. Thanks again for watching and for joining me. Take care and see you soon.